Hey, we're live here on Facebook for National Donor Day, and uh, it's a big day being February 14th. And with us today is uh, Gina Rao, Transplant Coordinator, Vicki Hunter, Transplant Manager, and Kara Cordell with Live On Nebraska, formerly NORS. Ladies, thanks for being with us today. I'm Taylor. I'm off camera. I'm a real person, <laughs> not artificial intelligence or anything. But let's talk about National Donor Day. How did this all get started? What, what is National Donor Day? Why, why do we celebrate it? Well, I think we celebrate it for many reasons. We celebrate it for our recipients, but uh, most importantly, this is the day to really recognize our living donors who come forward to give the gift of a kidney, and for our donors who sign up on the donor card, the registry to be a donor um, when they're not with us, and uh, their families who wish to carry on their last wishes. So really, this is a day to celebrate them um, along with our recipients. Um, the transplant team would not be possible without them. A lot of people probably don't think about this, but it is something you guys deal with on a regular basis. How organs and tissues for transplantation is obtained? How, how do we go about that process? So Kara can kind of <laughs> talk about what Live On Nebraska does with yeah. our deceased mm -hmm. donors, and um, Gina will be able to talk about our living donors. Right, so Live on Nebraska facilitates deceased donation for the entire state of Nebraska. So when someone, you know, un tragically has passed away, um, we get a phone call from the hospital wherever they passed away at, um, and they let us know that there's a potential donor. So we go into action, um, we do a little work behind the scenes to just check medical records, things like that, see if we think that person really has potential to be a donor. If so, um, we go to that hospital and begin the process of working through donation. So their family members are probably at the hospital. Um, we also check the donor registry of Nebraska to see if that person is registered. Um, if they are, we have a conversation with their family about that decision that that person made to be a donor. Um, if they're not registered, then we have to have that conversation with their family. Um, is donation something you think this person would want? So uh, it's always a really sensitive and difficult time, but we do it um, with as much respect as we can. And uh, if they were registered, or if the family says yes, then there's some time to go through and find out what organs can, can be transplanted. Once we know that, then we go through allocation, which I think we're gonna talk about a little bit more, and Vicki can definitely talk to that, but that's when we find the recipients for those organs. And so once we have those, then a surgery is scheduled. Um, the transplant teams from wherever the recipients are located come in. There's a recovery surgery. Um, we have a moment of silence for that donor to kind of honor that tremendous gift that they're making. Um, the recovery takes place and then very quickly they're transported to the recipient's transplant center wherever they need to go. And that's when uh, your team goes into action. Mm -hmm. Right, and so Gina's gonna talk a little bit about how living donation, um, how we do it here at Nebraska Medicine because a good population of our patients um, receive um, living co um, kidney um, transplants. Yeah, so um, with living donation, the, the living donor has to make the first contact. Um, so basically it's a, a website that they go to. It's nebraskamed.com forward slash kidney donation, kidney donor. And it's just a quick health questionnaire of um, just some basic information about uh, surgical history and family history. And then what happens is that gets reviewed with our physicians and if everything looks okay, we just send some education out to them to kind of get them familiar with the, the living donor process. If it's something that they want to proceed after reviewing that education, then they had to fill out a form um, and they give it, send it back to us and then we would start the process. Um, with the process, it, a lot of it's education all the way through. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a continuum of care. Um, we start with um, some education and then we do some initial labs where we get a baseline of their health and um, as well as blood type and tissue typing to see if they're compatible with their intended recipient. Um, but even if they're not compatible with their intended recipient, they can still proceed with exchange processes that we have here. Um, they also have them come to clinic to do some radiology testing and CAT scans and have them meet with our team. And our team is a multidisciplinary team that consists of a surgeon, a social worker, a psychologist, a kidney doctor, and then our coordinators. And of course, a very important person is the independent living donor advocate. Um, they're completely separate from the recipient team because we wanna make sure that this is a donor's independent choice to donate. Um, so the evaluation you know, can take anywhere from three weeks to six months. We kind of let the donor dictate how fast or slow they wanna go. So what about who can become an organ donor? 
Um, there aren't as many limitations as some people might think, but can we talk about a little bit about who can do that? I always like to talk about who can register as a donor when we Correct. talk about that, because I think that's the most important thing. In here in Nebraska, the thing to know with that is anybody that's 16 years or older can register as a donor. Doesn't matter how old they are, as long as they're 16 years old, they could be 95 and register as a donor. Um, people will think that they can't register because maybe they have some medical condition like diabetes or they have a heart condition that maybe even they would need a transplant down the road. Um, but that's not the case. There's no restrictions for medical conditions, anything like that, that somebody can register as a donor. So we always tell people that call us and ask, you know, we, we don't know, you know, what's going to happen when, when you pass away. We don't know what your physical condition is going to be. We don't know what technology and medicine will have done by that point. So if you feel like registering, if it's on your heart, it's the right thing to do, then just do it because nobody's going to be there to tell that you that you can't. So. And I totally agree with um, Kara. You know, let us make that decision. Your biggest decision is when you go to the DMV, sign up to be a registered donor, put that heart on your license, and then let the medical teams decide if you um, can be a donor or not. And for our living donors here at Nebraska, it has to be the age of consent, so it's 19. And, you know, we really don't even have a cutoff for um, our living donors, too. It, it all depends on um, the health of the donor that's coming mm -hmm. forward and trying to match that donor with the recipient. So there's really not a true final cutoff. Let's talk about, um, first, for deceased donors, what organs and tissues can be donated after death? So I think the body's just incredible, right? All the good that can it do for someone. So most people are familiar with the organs that can be donated. So things like heart, lungs, livy, liver, <laughs> kidney, <laughs> pancreas, and small intestine are the organs that can be donated. But what people might not be from as familiar with are the um, tissues. So things like bone, um, corneas, tendons, heart valves, skin, and I uterus. am missing what well, uterus can be donated. Now we are actually, um, this is not a deceased donation, but we are recovering placentas from um, babies after they're born now. Um, something that would be thrown away can now be recovered and they make um, wound, he wound healing um, grafts with those. So there's so many opportunities for people to help someone. Um, one donor, a deceased donor, could really impact the lives of over 100 people. What about living donation? We've heard a lot about that, um, but things change in recent years and you can do some things you couldn't do in the past. Right, so here at Nebraska Medicine, we do kidney and liver. Um, other parts of the country do do lungs, um, but currently we just do um, liver and kidney, and lungs would be the other organ that they would be able to um, donate one lung or a partial lung. What about at Nebraska Medicine specifically? We talk, just talked about the, the living ones. What, what organs do we transplant here? <coughs> we do, I think we're one of the few centers that does all the major solid organs. That is correct. We're very lucky here in um, Nebraska, at Nebraska Medicine. We do all organ transplants. Um, and we do a combination of transplants too. We have been fortunate enough here to actually do heart um, livers. Um, there's not very many of those done across the country. We've been able to do them here. We are a very well-known um, uh, multivisceral transplant center um, across the United States and actually internationally. Um, so um, people who live in Nebraska and around Nebraska are very lucky to have such a wonderful transplant team here. Um, in Nebraska. You don't have to go anywhere else. You can stay home. <laughs> and people do come from outside this region to be oh, transplanted. Absolutely. What's the reason for that? Why do folks do that? Um, I think um, one of the, um, the nice things we have um, is our partnership with our OPO, Live on Nebraska. We're the only transplant center in Nebraska, we're, and Live on Nebraska is our only OPO. So this collaboration that we've worked so hard to, to build with them, um, we're able to get our transplant um, recipients transplanted at a faster rate. Um, here in Nebraska, for a blood type O, you would be waiting about three years. If you go to the coast, especially like California, um, New York, those blood type O patients are waiting seven to 10 years. Their mortality on the wait list is very high. So we're seeing a lot of patients coming just um, due to the fact that our, our wait times are so short. But I think what really shows is when they come here is that we're from the Midwest and we're very humble and we love taking care of patients and we give them the best care that we possibly can. And they spread the word 
like wildfire to come to Nebraska. I believe one of our transplant surgeons said the best thing about coming here is this place is full of Nebraskans. <laughs> that would be Dr. Langness, yeah. our chief. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, before we go, um, there are other transplant centers in the region. Um, if we can brag a little bit here, what do we think sets us apart from those folks? I think we have some, um, I think we have some very good surgeons here at Nebraska Medicine. Uh, we have a very short wait time. I think our transplant coordinators um, work very di diligently with the staff as well as with the OPO and I think um, we just have that relationship that we work as a team um, and I believe that we always put the patient first when it comes to patient care. So I think that's um, one big thing. I think also um, from a living donor standpoint, I think Dr. Hoffman has really put us on the map as far as living donor exchanges. And I think that's something that is going to continue to build here at Nebraska Medicine. Um, and I think that's a good way, a great way to get people transplanted with a living donor um, and hopefully avoid dialysis. So, yeah. Well, we did get a couple of comments on our Facebook page. Um, before we go, it's someone who said it's the best center in the country, and it's someone who said <laughs> that they're uh, that you all are the greatest. One year from being uh, having the kidney transplant, and thank you, thank you, thank you. Right. So awesome. that's I, what we live for, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's, <laughs> moments like that's, that. I mean, that's why we come and do our jobs every day. I mean, there's sobering statistics out there. There's over. 125,000 people who are waiting for organ transplants. Here in Nebraska, there's over 400 patients for all organs. You know, um, 18 people are added a day to the, the list, um, the Unite Network of Organ Sharing list, but 22 people die a day waiting for those organs. So we are here today to celebrate our donors, rather they're alive or deceased and they decided to be an organ donor. And once again, without them, we couldn't be doing our job. So mm -hmm. it's very humbling. And, and very respectful for them to, to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. We were talking, hopefully I don't go over, we were talking a little bit earlier about people from coming from out of state and we had a really great moment not too long ago where um, one of the kidney patients came from California to get their transplant here and his donor was one of our donors here in Nebraska and we got to bring them together um, on very short notice because mm -hmm. the recipient was going back to California, but he, he wanted to meet his donor family while they were here. And um, they just had a very special connection to California, unknown until they met. And like, those are the days that I mm -hmm. live for and when those families can meet each other and um, something really great can come from a tragedy and these people have hope and a new connection. Mm -hmm. And that's just the best day. Yeah. And a celebration of life for sure. Yeah, correct. And one final comment. Uh, the gentleman said, I'm so lucky to have had my liver transplanted at Nebraska Medicine. Yeah. So, we're lucky to have you guys here today. I say guys, I should say ladies. <laughs> I appreciate that. And uh, happy National Donor Day, unless there's anything else you'd like to add before we go. Register. Yeah. Go to our website, liveonnebraska.org. It'll take you about one minute. So, if yeah. you haven't done it already, please think about it. And go on the website if you're interested in being an altruistic donor, a living donor. Great. Thanks. And happy National Donor Day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.